A new tropical wave has came off the coast of Africa, and I think we'll be watching this tropical wave for quite some time. I think it has a shot to become our next named storm, which is Gabrielle, and eventually on down the road, could become a hurricane. Of course, everybody wants to know, is this going to impact anyone or is it going to stay out to sea? We'll speak on what we do know. We'll compare all model guides and get very detailed for you folks from all the overnight to this morning model data. After that, we'll speak on our next cool down. There's been some changes with that and we'll speak on those changes and then we'll round the video off with today's forecast. Happy Labor Day. Hope you guys are doing well. It's feeling awesome here in Central South Carolina. It feels like September 1st. It is September 1st and uh, I personally absolutely love it. It's in the mid to upper 50s here so it's awesome. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it and if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling this morning. So let's make sure this is going to work. We'll take a broad look at everything. Listen, there, there's not a whole lot going on right now, but I do want to mention there's some action off the eastern seaboard. Uh, it looks like we have some beefier convection, if you will, right here, but this isn't bothering anybody. Once upon a time, we thought maybe around the time period we're in right now, several days ago, that we were going to have a low pressure closer to the eastern seaboard. Uh, there is lower pressure off the eastern seaboard, but it's well off the coastline, not really bothering anybody. So that's good. But the Gulf is quiet. The Caribbean, pretty quiet. Uh, all eyes are really out here in the MDR, main development region, the eastern tropical Atlantic. We have a lot of energy indicated by the colors you see on your screen, the, the greens, the yellows, the reds, blacks. This indicates colder cloud tops, which means we have taller updrafts. Um, which means we have um, uh, more intense convection, colder cloud tops indicated by these colors you see here. So if we get a little bit closer to this, this is our wave. The National Hurricane Center says it's about right into here. Uh, so we got to watch this. And like I said, I think we're going to be watching this for a while. I think in the shorter term, it is just going to be a slow, slow mover. And we'll show you what, what we're talking about with that here in a second when we compare model guides. But this is it, just an unorganized huge, I mean, very large area of shower and storm action out here, but kind of in this circled area is really where the core of our wave is. So we just need to watch it. And there's definitely some differences between the Euro and the GFS, that's for sure. And we're about to go over that. But the latest information that we have, like I said, this is about where the wave is, where the um, X, um, the orange X is. And it has a 40% chance to develop in this orange area between now and the next seven days into a depression or a named storm. Next name is Gabrielle, and it says that a tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic um, uh, is producing disorganized shower and storm action. Environmental conditions appear conducive for slow development for this system. Tropical depression could form uh, later this week into uh, this coming weekend that we can say now. So we got to watch this. This is it. This is the main area of interest, and really the only area of interest it is uh, for right now at least. So uh, let's start it off for Wednesday morning and let's go over the latest Euro model that we have. And it's hard to see where this is on your screen, but the wave itself is kind of somewhere into there. Okay, so let's re-get this going again. And here we go. We get into Thursday. If, if I forget to mention any time or date, it's up here. Look right up here. It's kind of small, but it's there. We get into Friday. Nothing really down there. We get into Saturday. I mean, at this point, we're five days from now. You're not really seeing much. And then we're getting into like next Saturday evening and there is kind of a weak low pressure. Notice it has barely moved. I mean, it, it just, it, it, it's, it's just not moving. The thing is, is this is initializing lower in latitude also that I'll mention in the short term, in the now term, than what model guidance was kind of thinking it was. So that is something to watch. And we'll speak more on that as we go along here. But man, the Euro does not want this moving much kind of being steering, steered by lower level wind currents more because of how weak it is. Therefore, it's slower. Eventually, it picks up some forward speed. We get about a week from today. It's still a very weak low pressure here. And then we get to about eight days from now. It's still weak low. And then it sneaks this really close to, say, the Leeward Islands, Lesser Antilles. And, but it's still weak low pressure. Uh, you know, and then it just never develops, which is crazy because if we look at the run, say... 
Let's look at the run, say, um, yesterday. I think it was a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, it was a lot more aggressive. So it develops this quickly. This is the run, the Euro yesterday afternoon. Develops this into a tropical storm about a week from today. Immediately begins to gain some latitude, get further north, develop into a hurricane, a major hurricane. Misses the Caribbean islands, thank goodness, and then heads north and then threatens Bermuda. So um, that's a great representation of how a weaker storm would stay lower in latitude. But does it, listen, a weaker storm, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a storm that just never develops. So just remember that. Uh, we don't want the core of this wave to kind of sneak into the Caribbean or eventually, you know, really tucked in into the Southwest Atlantic and then it blows up, right? We don't want that to happen. That's kind of what happened with Aaron, kind of, but it began to take off kind of around this area. So we continue to move forward here. Um, we'll look at the latest GFS. This is starting off once again for Wednesday morning. It's a lot more aggressive in the shorter term, which is a battle right now between the Euro and the GFS. So we start to get to say Thursday. This is already starting to get close to tropical storm status by Thursday morning. This Thursday morning, September the 4th. And then we start to get into a Friday. It's a thousand millibar low. That would definitely be tropical storm Gabrielle if this is exactly what happens, which we're not saying it is. It's just model guidance. But keep in mind, the Euro barely has this as a tropical depression or definitely not even close to a tropical storm at this point. GFS is already getting close to category one hurricane status by the time we get into this coming Saturday evening. And then, of course, because it gets so strong, it gains some latitude pretty fast. And we got like a week from today about a category two or so hurricane um, out here in the Atlantic. But, you know, this is kind of uh, heading a little bit north, not a full jolt north. But we get 10 days from now, we got a, a borderline major hurricane, you know, I would say well northeast of the Leeward Islands, thank goodness. But, you know, I say thank goodness that we don't know if this is exactly the way it's going to happen. So this is all the way out until, folks, this is way out, all the way to like the evening of September 12th. I really think there's a possibility we're talking about this for a while. Um, but... This begins to turn, head north, uh, you know, misses Bermuda about in the mid-month time frame, September 15th. Um, I mean, just way out there. It's crazy if we are legitimately talking about this for this long. And we're just going to stop it there. It begins to get north on our screen. And uh, we certainly, we need to watch everybody with this. But the Euro AI model, we'll go here in time and we take it into this coming Friday. It's just weak. It kind of follows the Euro. The Euro AI model normally follows the Euro, keeps this as a weak tropical system, just a blob of green here, just a wave, and honestly never really develops this really at all. Uh, so there is another wave behind it that we need to watch. And, um, We'll just continue to watch multiple waves behind one another, but it doesn't really develop the main wave. Now, the icon model from overnight will start off this coming Wednesday evening, the 3rd, and it follows more so the GFS. It likes somewhat of a stronger system, but not as strong as the GFS, and kind of keeps this at around a depression, weak tropical storm between, you know, I would say midweek this week into about this time next, um, next Monday. So... Um, if you do hear any ruckus in the background, guys, my neighbor um, has somebody mowing their grass. And, you know, I don't blame him one bit. He's trying to get it knocked out early on a Labor Day morning. But uh, I was trying. That's just why I'm, I started my video so late. I was trying to get this video when he was done. But he's been mowing it for a while, which is kind of odd because it's a pretty small yard. But anyways, we're not going to get too far off track here. But if you hear any low distance uh, kind of rumbling in the background, that is my neighbor mowing his grass. Or he's got somebody mowing his grass. Anyways. Uh, so we're going to start us out a week from today. Uh, this is the Euro Ensemble. Remember, this isn't like uh, 25 low pressures. This is just um, a 51 member ensemble run. So if all 51 members develop on this ensemble run, it'll put all 51 members on the map. In this case, it does not, but it develops over half of them. So this is a strong signal a week from right now that we are going to have some sort of tropical system in the middle to western portion of the main development region of the tropical Atlantic. So we'll go from day 7 to day 10. So we get all the way into next week. And uh, you notice there is a pretty solid spread at this point. You got some stronger members that begin to turn out to sea. You got some that hang low in latitude and stay south. But that's a, I mean, that's a pretty wide spread, right?
right here in this region. So some going like this, some cruising south, some going right now in the middle. Now I've already read a lot of comments. There's a lot of comments on whether it's social media, whether it's in the YouTube comments, like they're just immediately assuming this is staying out the sea. Goodness guys, we, we should know better than that, right? We can't assume one way or the other. I mean, yeah, the blocking pattern on top certainly favors this either staying weak and not really doing anything, but it, I would say it more so favors this turning or, or staying out to sea. But we cannot assume that. But this is what we can look at with this is 10 days from now. That's a solid, pretty solid signal for this tropical wave surviving. And there's some stronger members in this. Even some stronger members that are hanging low in latitude like this 930 member right here. We got a ton of sub 1000 millibar lows. So we got to watch this for sure. Now we look at the GFS ensemble, which goes about a week out. Let's just keep it out a week. And a lot of these members get north fast. Okay. But if we look at this and we go to the OOZ and then we take this, say, 240 hours out. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these members are very strong. Some of them are weak, but a lot of them do get gain latitude and begin to head north. Um, but we got to watch. Now, if we look at the Euro ensemble, uh, we have to look at this a different way. It shows like little spaghettios out here, but we can go actually past 10 days. One thing I want you to notice is we get the, you know, day, um, day 10 and these little circles are potential low pressures, but we get past day 10 and you can see how some of these get really, get way too close for comfort for the Bahamas, Turks, Caicos. We start to get some activity starting to flare up in the Gulf. Um, and just about the time we get into about the mid month time frame. You're starting to see, you know, activity out there for sure. So one thing that we'll see that gets updated tomorrow, and I'm, I'll be, I'm kind of antsy to see what they say, but this was updated last Tuesday. Listen, they nailed the potential for the tropical wave between the third and the ninth. And there's literally going to be a wave tracking right through this area. So I think they did very good. 20% chance of development, but technically right now as a 40, but we got to watch the 10th through the 16th too. This darker red area, that's a 40% chance of tropical development. That could be a totally different wave. Um, but it's also say, hey, watch watch areas of the Gulf and the Western Caribbean also. So that's an update on the tropics. Let's talk a little bit about this cool down. Let's start off this morning. It's nice. We know that. But this really isn't the, the cool air on the way. We get into tomorrow morning, not a whole lot. Some cooler conditions across the upper, upper Midwest. This is forecast low temperatures from the National Weather Service. But then we get into the morning of the third. See how these chillier 40s start to creep into our picture. And then we get into the fourth this coming Thursday. Look at these widespread lows in the 30s. So we're definitely going to get some frost advisories, maybe some freeze watches, freeze warnings in these areas. So if you're wondering when we're going to get our first freeze, Mitch, well, we certainly need to watch as we get into Thursday morning and Friday morning. And as we get into Friday morning, maybe not as cool, but widespread 40s. Um, some chillier temperatures all the way down to Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Mississippi, Arkansas. And this is getting into next Saturday morning. Maybe a reinforcing shot of cool air, but this is nice temperatures. Does it get all the way to the Dallas-Fort Worth area? Not quite sure, but, you know, maybe some 60s for lows. But these are these are low temperatures. And then we get in the next Sunday morning. And, I mean, yeah, we're, we're it definitely is just going to feel like flat-out fall up here in the upper Midwest. Okay. Now we back this up and we look at potential high temperatures. This is for tomorrow. Um, not too bad. But then look at the highs up here in the northern sections of Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the UP, only in the 50s. This is Thursday. This is Friday. This is Saturday. This is Sunday. So nice fall-like conditions up here. And it does beat down the heat down here for the deep south too. Now, what about the eastern U.S.? This is one area that's changed. So we get into Wednesday. One thing I want you to note is we are still getting the nice return flow from the trough last week in these areas. This is why we're waking up to such nice temperatures this morning across the Carolinas, Georgia, etc. And we'll get it again tomorrow. I mean, there'll be widespread sub 60 degree temperatures all the way down to Georgia, the Carolinas. And I mean, even heck, even in the Wednesday morning, it's nice, still cool temperatures all the way down to Georgia, the Panhandle, Florida, Alabama. Then the air mass begins to modify ahead of the next cold front. So this is Thursday morning, still decent. And then here comes the cold front pressing up against the western spine of the Appalachian Mountains. Nice temperatures, but does it make it to the, across the, the Appalachian Mountains? It looks like it kind of pumps the brakes a little bit. Now, I do think this cold front will ooze some cold air east of the Apps 
I'm really speaking of the Carolinas and the Georgia, but it quite literally is going to ooze. I mean, it's not going to be, it's going to have a hard time. This cold front's going to have a hard time sort of pressing all the way through. But I mean, look at these low time temperatures uh, for like northern Alabama, northern Mississippi, northern Georgia, Tennessee points north. I mean, very nice. I mean, look at these lows next Sunday morning. Look at these lows next Saturday morning. Week two of college football. So we look at the high temperatures. Um, nice conditions tomorrow. Low humidity begins to warm up, though. And, heck, by the time we're into Friday, we're starting to get 90s creeping back up into the Carolinas, Georgia. And then even Saturday, it's going to be a hot one. And then the heat starts to get beat down a little bit. And I do think this cold front, as we get in early next week, will make it. But, listen, it's hard to complain when we're getting such a nice air mass right now. You can see what I'm talking about. This this is for Wednesday morning. These are temperature anomalies. The blues are temperatures are below average. The warmer colors is above average. And you'll notice the core of this cold air mass, really, here comes the first kind of push of cold air. Doesn't really get penetrate really far southeast. And then the next kind of push, here it comes in the Friday. These, those greens, I mean, that's 10, 15 degrees below average. Does it make it all the way to the southeast? It tries to push. So we're getting into next Sunday, next Monday, and uh, finally get some below average temperatures in, but it's only a few degrees below average. So we just got to see. It does look to remain on the cooler side, at least when you compare it to average temperatures. But the thing that's changed with this next cold front is it still is going to blast the middle of the country all the way to about west of the Appalachian Mountains. Tennessee looks like a lock for this, and like Kentucky, even northern Alabama, northern Mississippi. But the thing that's changed for our, our folks, and this includes me because I live in South Carolina, is it doesn't look like it's going to fool right on through anymore. That could change. We'll have to watch. So Today's weather, let's get this in motion. Some rain greeting you guys in Omaha and surrounding areas, just the middle of the country. A little bit of rain in northeast Minnesota. Heck, outside of that, guys, there ain't really a whole lot going on. Watches, warnings, advisories, still some heat advisories across California, heat alerts across Washington, flood watches across Texas. So we continue to get a risk of rain, but, you know, there ain't a whole lot to speak on. If you live in the green, it's just a general risk of thunderstorms, no real risk of severe weather today. And then if you look at the excessive rainfall outlook, there's not even a 15% risk anywhere. So, guys, the Labor Day weather looks nice. We start off this morning in the southeast, just some... Scattered showers and storms across Florida. I don't think it'll be quite as widespread as yesterday. Congrats to Miami for winning. Sorry for my Notre Dame fans. Um, but some showers could develop in, you know, Tennessee, northern Alabama, maybe right where the Carolinas and Georgia meet. Uh, but I don't think this will be a big deal at all. Um, so, I mean, pretty, pretty nice weather. Now, the northeast, nice also. I don't think hardly anyone will get even a drop of rain. So enjoy your weather. Uh, the South Central U.S., once again, just another day where some rain is going to be falling around Kansas City, eastern Kansas, western Missouri, down in Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma. Some showers and storms could be dancing around in these areas down to Texas, but, you know, nothing too widespread at all. North Central U.S., blocking high, preventing a lot of moisture, but we could get some showers, maybe even a storm into Minnesota, Minneapolis. Watch out. And a little bit of flow comes down as a cold front drops down. Tomorrow, this will get some showers and storms going across Minnesota tomorrow morning. Uh, but out west, it's quiet, pretty warm, nothing to speak on. Temperatures, beautiful, beautiful, phenomenal day of weather, especially east of the Appalachian Mountains with return flow just whipping in northeast flow across these areas, dry, cool air. Um, and then this is out west, so... That's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Man, got that below 20 minutes. Sorry about the late video. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's all we got. You know, going forward this week, I think the tropics is going to become the big story as we're going to be watching this next tropical wave. But um, not quite where we need to do two videos a day yet, but we'll see if that changes sometime this week. Uh, God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful day. Get a lot of rest. Get some things done at the same time. I know I'm going to be getting a lot done. I'm going to get bringing my fall stuff down from my attic and, uh, you know, getting ready for just the best time of the year. I love this time of the year, guys. It's just something about it. It's just awesome. So that's all I got. God bless. Have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning.